Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike for Mobox, and in this video we're going to be discussing uh, how to morph shapes in After Effects. So whether it's the pre-shapes already available in After Effects that you can create from the toolbar, or whether it's custom shapes, uh, we'll be going over all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. So first up, let's just create a new composition. Uh, 1920 by 1080 looks good to me. Uh, tutorial... 001, let's hope that there will eventually be 100 tutorials. So uh, let's just back out of here. And just uh, real quick, I'll just go over kind of the toolbar set that I have. Um, I just have the preview stuff over here as well as Smoother, which essentially smooths out uh, different keyframes. I don't use it too often, um, but for a recent project I had it, so I have it here. In fact, I'm just gonna close that panel because it's unnecessary. I've got the character panel for text and as well as paragraph. And then I have effects in project over here. So uh, on this side, I've got a script called Motion 2 and a script called Align. Align actually comes with After Effects. You go to Windows and you can uh, check it here to get that window. But Motion, uh, that was actually purchased from a guy, uh, a channel actually, that goes by Mo or Mount MoGraph. So I can put a link in there. It's really helpful. I'm, I'll use it a couple times um, throughout this video, but it's not necessary. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Layer, new, solid. And we'll pick a nice red color. Maybe something like that. Maybe a little bit darker. There we go. So um, starting out here, let's go ahead and create some shapes. So I'll show you the, uh, the first way, which is how to just morph shapes from path layers. So if you're not familiar, path layers are essentially, uh, so if I create a square here, a path is, is this shape. So it's the outline and how it's, together and at this point connects to this point, this point connects to this point, um, and what have you. So let's go ahead and align this in the center of the object. That way, when we start rotating, uh, we don't rotate over that. We want to rotate actually in the center. So we'll come up here um, to the anchor point tool, or you could just hit Y on the keyboard, drag it to the center. Or if you have this motion script, you could just click this button here. This script actually allows you to put the, put the point wherever. But uh, And then go over to align and we'll center it and center it. So now we have the square in the center. In fact, we'll actually shrink this down by clicking on the shape layer, hitting S on the keyboard, and then shrinking down. So we'll create some other shapes too. Let's say we'll create a circle. Um, hold down, hold shift, and it makes a perfect circle. Otherwise you get something that looks like that. So make sure you hold shift to get a perfect circle if that's what you want. Um, y on the keyboard to, whoa, what's going on? Y on the keyboard, grab the anchor point, put it in the middle, align, over, over, and now the shape is in the center. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll create some other shapes too. Let's just say a triangle. So if you don't know a triangle, you grab the polygon tool. Again, you want to hit shift. And over here, you could actually see the shape layer. So you'll see polystar. That's the object. As you can see, it's selected. Um, first, we're actually going to um, center the anchor point only because triangles center point um, is not necessarily in the same center point. So uh, we'll click on it, we'll click a polystar, hit the arrow down, polystar path, and bring the number of points down to three. So now we have a triangle. Might actually even wanna scale this up though, I'm not sure if that'll make any difference when we're actually doing it. So align it, again, align tool right in the middle. So now we have three shapes. One is the square, which we'll rename to square. Uh, then we have the circle. And then we have the triangle. Oops, I spelled triangle wrong, but that's okay. We'll survive. Um, what I'm also going to do is also show you this little trick. Um, this background layer, this red background la layer, what I don't want is I don't want to accidentally try to grab a shape and, and end up moving the background layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this um, box right here. Essentially, it's it's a lock tool. So I'm going to lock that layer, and I'm going to press this. This is shy. So essentially, all the items that are shied, um, when I come up here and, and initiate the shy, because this is the initiation bar, you could do a bunch of things here, um, but these initiate it for the actual... Um, composition. So I'm going to shy it and then go and hit the shy button and now it's gone, but it's still there and I just can't grab it. So that way it's kind of not in the way and it doesn't uh, get in the way of anything. So what we're going to want to do to get the path for each of these objects is pretty simple, but it might not be something you know. So you're going to want to open it up and go into contents uh, for the rectangle or the square in particular. Uh, it'll be rectangle one, rectangle path, and you want to right click and go to convert to Bezier path 
When you open that up, now you have the ability to press a keyframe. So a keyframe essentially is, is if I want to move an object, it's the point at which the object is at first, which is a keyframe, and the point where it's at is the second point, and then it'll move in between the two keyframes. So if I put a keyframe, um, for, for, for example, on this circle, we'll do P for position on the keyboard. I put a keyframe there, and then I move to four seconds, and I move the circle there. There's two keyframes, one at different points, but the circle just moves between them fluidly. But we don't want to do any of that. What we want to do is we want to create a path keyframe, which is essentially the same thing, except for it's for the shape. So it, it'll be different shapes at different times. So create a path there. And then we're going to do, want to do the same thing for all the shapes. Um, ellipse, right click, convert to Bezier path, create a path keyframe, triangle, contents, polystar, right click, path, path. So I'm going to select all the layers and I'm going to hit U on the keyboard, which only shows the current keyframes. If I hit U again, it hides them all. If I hit them, it, it, it shows them. So that's U on the keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to about two seconds and I'm going to grab the triangle path keyframe and I'm going to control C and copy it, hit the square path and paste it. So what you'll see here is something kind of interesting happening. By the way, I just hit the layers by pressing the eyeball next to the layer. Um, is that the shape kind of kind of jerks over. And I don't know if it's a because the method that I use to do this or if it's an After Effects glitch, but it's a problem that I have often. So a way that I found out how to get rid of, to get by this glitch is that if I actually copy the first keyframe and go to a separate piece of time and paste it, um, it doesn't it doesn't jerk as much. So I'm gonna again delete the first keyframe because I don't need that and then move this one back over. And it should yeah, see how it doesn't it doesn't jerk around, although the square is not in the center anymore. So I just click it and click the, the square layer and then then put it back in the center. But you'll notice that the that the anchor point is not in the center of the object. So I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard and drag it back to the center and then realign it just to make sure it is aligned. So now you'll see is that when it when it shifts, it does change and it does change in size, too. But but we'll, we can get around that later. So, okay, so we have the triangle in, now we just need the circle. So I'm gonna copy the circle keyframe, control C, press the path on the square and paste it. So now I could actually get rid of these, these two circle and triangle layers. We don't need them anymore. We just use them for their paths. So you'll notice now that, that the object changes between shapes um, throughout time. So another trick that you could do to make sure that the shapes are, are the same size or if you want them to rotate or anything, you could just press the square, hit S on the keyboard, um, put a scale keyframe, hit you on the keyboard again, and now it shows all of our all of our keyframes. So let's say we want this the triangle to be kind of similar sized as the square. So we just move to the time where the triangle hits, and we could just scale it up. And in fact, we might even want to do the position. So if we hit P on the key on the keyboard and put a position keyframe, um, we're going to actually drag it back over because it was the position of the square we liked, and we're just going to drag this down. And if you need guides, you could just come over here and go to proportional grid and there's a good guide there. Or you can do, um, I think, tile safe grid where uh, it kind of just gives you a where the focus should be. But I think uh, proportional grid is the best. And I actually put it in a pretty centered. So, um, so I actually don't even need the proportional grid. So you could see that the object scales. It almost looks like it scales up kind of unnaturally so I think the scales might be too high we'll just bring the scale down maybe a little bit um, that way it kind of looks more like like the object is is not <laughs> scaling up and then scaling down though that, that could be a cool a cool um, you know kind of effect if that's what you're trying to go for but in this case we're not so now let's just go take care of the circle um, because this uh, circle is perfectly circle we could just realign it into the center of the box and it'll put a keyframe there so so perfect it's already there we just need scale so we'll scale it down to maybe there um, so now something else you could do is you might want to maybe add some rotation so you just hit R on the keyboard put a keyframe there press U and then maybe you want it to so it's turning that way already maybe we want it to turn um, counterclockwise a little bit more so maybe to 120 we'll bake it so that way maybe it kind of gives a cool effect where it's you know it kind of is just a little different um, or you can make it go the other way you can make it go clockwise we'll do uh, 
Wait, which way were we going? Oh, maybe we were going the wrong way. Let's do negative 120. We were going the wrong way. So you could see now it kind of has a nice twist into it. Uh, that could be interesting. And then maybe we want to do negative 240 to get another another twist into the circle. Though, because it's a circle, there's not a lot of twist. Uh, so that's just how you morph shapes like that. And uh, this motion tool is actually really useful. You could do this um, other ways, but I'll just do it this way, for example, to give it more of a snappy um, feel. Essentially, it's an easy in, easy out tool. So now it's just easy into all of these. So let's let's go over here. You press N on the keyboard. It kind of cuts off the composition there. And then up here, uh, you could press this RAM preview button and it'll kind of load it up and we can actually see what it looks like to see if we like it. So it'll be kind of laggy in the beginning, but after this, it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and preview it, see what it looks like. I think I canceled the RAM preview somehow. So you can see that it that it really nicely morphs into the different shapes and it, it has a nice smooth effort uh, due to this uh, motion script. Uh, alternatively, you won't get the exact same effect, but if you highlight them all and right click and go down to keyframe assistant, you can do easy, easy ease, um, but it won't quite be as, as good, but you can edit it with the, with the, uh, there's a, a graph editor, but that's, that might be too much for this video. We'll just cover this. So let's just see what this looks like. Yeah. Easy ends. Okay. Um, if you don't have this motion script, that's a, it's a, it, it would be fine if you use this. Um, also this motion script, I think is like 20 bucks. So it's not that hard to get if, if that's what you want. <clears throat> so now we know how to do shapes from after effects. So from the shape tool, but what if we have our own shape? So let's go ahead and create a new composition, composition, new comp, and we'll do this tutorial 001 B and let's again, create a new layer solid. And we'll make this one, let's just make it kind of dark just for fun. So we got a nice dark layer here and I'm gonna drag in a rocket shape that was made in Illustrator. So Illustrator, if you're not familiar, it's a vector-based uh, graphics uh, editor or graphics tool. So I just created this, this rocket shape and we're gonna wanna morph this into let's say a triangle. So let's actually change the color of this as well. The black on gray just doesn't quite look well. So, um, actually, well, first what we're gonna to wanna to do is before I get ahead of myself is right click it and go to create shapes from vector layer. And then we can go ahead and delete the af or the illustrator layer. So essentially what this did was just made it so now we can have a path and it's actually a shape layer now instead of a illustrator file layer. So um, if you, we go up to effects and I believe it's generate fill we can now change the color so let's make this you know what let's just make this a white color just for simplicity and so okay so we have this tr this rocket it's not doing anything but what we're going to want to do is we're going to want it to morph into a triangle so we're going to come up back up here pressing q on the keyboard um scrolls through these objects or i believe if you just hold on to it you can as well you can go through them uh, polygon tool um shift and drag out and then polystar, polystar path and bring the points down to three and then we will move this into position. So maybe right about there looks good. We're also while we're here is gonna right click polystar path and convert to Bezier path and create a path keyframe for that um, just so it's a little bit easier. Um, actually, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna create a, a a Bezier path. I'm going to show you how to how to morph this rocket into this triangle without using paths um, from other objects. I, because I'll show you what happens when when we do it like this. So coming coming into the rocket contents uh, group one path. The, w when you convert the uh, Illustrator layer, it already has a path keyframe. Selecting both layers, hitting U. Um, I'm going to copy this triangle and come into the path of the rocket and paste it. And I'll show you why I don't like doing it like this for objects that I create in Illustrator is that it twists and it turns and it moves and it just, 
it's 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 not really what I'm going for. If that's what you're going for, then then this could be helpful, but but it just doesn't really look all that good. So we're actually going to delete the keyframe there. We're going to delete the keyframe on the sh on the triangle shape layer, and we're going to put it back into existence. We're going to see it, and we're going to bring the transparency down so that we could we could shape the rocket to it manually. So I'm also going to actually scale this up as well, just so. Uh, I, I think that 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 it'll, it'll look a little bit better if the object is is more in line with with the shape of the rocket. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard for transparency, bring the transparency down, and now it's time to go into the rocket. So if I double click on the rocket, um, I have the ability to actually this is gonna be really hard to do like this. Let's actually bring the rocket above the other layer and bring the transparency of the rocket down as well. So that way we could at least see where the rocket intercepts the triangle. So pressing U on the keyboard, pull up the path. We're gonna click on the rocket and now these little points here are the points of interest of where the path layer uh, essentially is, is, is movable. So um, I'm gonna grab this point, I'm just gonna bring it down uh, to match up with the triangle. So this is a little labor intensive, um, but I'm gonna speed it up, bear it back, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. All right, so I'm done. I just easily, quickly transformed the rocket into the shape of the triangle, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete the triangle layer because we don't need that anymore. Press T on the keyboard for opacity, which I don't know why it's opacity. Maybe it means transparency, that's why it's T. Um, but it's not quite perfect, but it looks good enough. And when things are moving, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell. So pressing U on the keyboard so we can see the keyframes, you can see that the rocket turns into a triangle. We could put the triangle first to make it so that so the triangle turns into a rocket, and then you could do anything from there. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's just a real quick transforming shapes into other shapes, morphing shapes. And uh, I hope you learned something along the way. Even if you already knew how to morph shapes, this might have helped you in other ways. If you enjoyed this video, go check out my other videos as well as my other channels. Be sure to subscribe for more videos on some of the effects that I'm able to accomplish in all of my videos. So thanks for watching.